r slash no sleep posted by you slash marvelous apple dragon fairfield apartments part one hey reader you don't need to know who i am or where fairfield is you just need to know that fairfield is an apartment complex in a location i will not disclose this place was bought by my father who later went missing so i run the place now and to keep myself entertained i thought i'd tell you some interesting stories about this place so let's start with something simple 1 Street 5E. Yeah, yeah, I know you've heard this one a million times before. It's the stereotypical Phantom Street, so I don't think I need to explain much. It can appear anywhere in the complex, you see dead loved ones blah, blah, blah. Not complicated. But it is slightly peculiar, because it is the source of everything else in Fairfield. I don't know why, but everything came out of Street 5E. Of course, the few people who have come out alive have been too traumatized to say what they saw in there, and most of them went insane. And the ones who didn't come back usually were never found or found, chewed up and spat out. So let's move on to. To Ronnie. So, Ronnie is the resident homeless dude. But the thing is. He's been here since my dad bought the place, 50 years ago. And he hasn't aged a day. He's just been there, shaking his pan at people and unexisting them if they didn't give him anything. And yes, he can do that. Ronnie is also the only being who looks exactly like a human and acts like one. He also isn't malicious, if you give him a penny when he shakes his pan at you, he'll let you go free, and sometimes he'll even talk with you about burgers. That seems to be his only interest. Also, do not try to give him anything other than money or a burger. A resident tried to give him a slice of pizza once and is now in the ICU in a coma. Ronnie also hates dogs, don't bring one near him. 3 Story Time Let me tell you about the time we found a camera at the entrance of Street 5E. So. One of our newer residents decided to ignore the clearly written rule to not enter 5e and decided to film his experience. Castle, my dog, who is himself one of the beings, brought the camera to me when I was asleep. It was, interesting, to say the least. It starts out like normal, rambling about how he knew that the rules were fake and he was going to prove the management is stupid. He walks into 5e three minutes into the video. He makes a comment about the heavy fog and how he can't see us. Rumbling sounds. He starts to get nervous. He sees something up ahead and immediately turns around and legs it. Unfortunately, no matter which way he runs, he seems to get closer to the thing. The video cuts out at 10 minutes in. The recording resumes at 12 minutes and the fog restricts vision. You can hear the frantic screams and begs of the man. It appears he's been captured by the thing. Gulp. Chewing sounds. The fog cuts off all vision and the recording ends. So. At this point I've realized that there is something living inside 5e and that it does in fact consume the people who enter. It is most likely the progenitor of the other beings as well. Of course, I'm not stupid enough to actually enter, but I hope that the next person who goes in brings a better camera. Since I have a bit more time on my hands, let's cover some more of the things inside this blasted place. For the man with the top hat. This one's a bit more on the cryptic side. At 11pm every night, there's a chance that the man with the top hat will knock on your door. If this happens, you have to open the door within 5 minutes and say fancy some late night snacks? At this point, the top hat man will nod and enter the home. If you try to make him leave, he will turn you into a human yo-yo and chuck you out of your own window. Once you let him in, he'll help himself to some of your food and talk with you. Unlike Ronnie, the man with the top hat will talk about the other beings as well. But do not attempt to start the conversation, only reply to what he says. If you try to say something, he will turn you into a yo-yo and chuck you out your window. He doesn't usually talk about the other beings, but he has spoken on Ronnie and some others. He calls Ronnie, he whose palace was destroyed by greed. No idea what that means, but you can fight amongst yourselves to figure it out. He also always carries dog treats, but don't feed them to your dog. I'm pretty sure only Castle is capable of eating them without spontaneously combusting. At precisely 11.30, say I think you ought to go home, your wife will be waiting and he will promptly exit your house, sometimes leaving behind his top hat. If he does, Say I think you forgot this and hand it to him. He might give you some kind of gold coin if you do this, but it doesn't appear to be made out of any earthly metal. So, that's all I have time for today, as Castle is begging me to take him for a walk, and it isn't pretty when he gets angry. I hope you liked reading this, I definitely enjoyed writing it, and I hope you don't have any intention of settling down in Fairfield Apartments. It's cheap as hell, but trust me, it isn't worth it, because once you settle down, there's no leaving.
maybe I'll talk about that next time. Well, until then. Posted by you slash marvelous, Apple, Dragon. Fairfield Apartments, something smashed through my window. Part 2. Hey everyone, it's me again. I had nothing better to do so I'm posting again. Interesting things have been happening lately. Fairfield seems more, awake. More and more problems are popping up so I haven't found time to post. But I have a new interesting story to share with you all. I'll get straight to the point. A few days ago something crashed through my window. Firstly, rude as hell, windows aren't cheap but I digress. As you would expect, it wasn't just a pigeon. I popped awake and Castle was already growling. I picked up my bedside shotgun, yes, I have a bedside shotgun, and headed towards the noise. I opened the door and instantly retched. The thing lying outside my bedroom was just wrong. It was writhing and bubbling and seemingly shifted from liquid to solid to gaseous and back. It looked like it had wings but my eyes were too watery to tell. All I knew was that this thing wasn't supposed to be here and I shouldn't be looking at it. I managed to turn my head around and notice that the clock now said 3.56 am and not 3.40. I had been staring at that thing for 15 minutes. It started making noise that sounded both high-pitched and low-pitched, smooth and rough. I felt like my ears were boiling. Thankfully Castle Dive bombed the thing and tore it in two. I think. I couldn't be sure because I felt that I had spent a month inside a maraca. Perry found me at 9, laying on the floor, unresponsive. He took me to the hospital and I went back to feeling normal, which wasn't much of an improvement. I was back on my feet the next day and went back to managing whatever needed to be managed and giving Castle extra dog treats from the top hat man. And speaking of that, he showed up yesterday, looking much more stressed than usual. I followed all the rules and he started talking. Another thing I forgot to mention last time is that the top hat man sometimes gives you permission to ask questions and such. He happened to do so this time and I immediately started asking questions. I asked him about the window smasher bat, yes that's what I'm calling it now. He started sweating and opened his mouth as if to say something but stopped. After 5 minutes he said messengers, out of my power. He then stood up and practically ran out the door. I had nightmares that night, which wasn't too uncommon, considering the seemingly infinite nightmare fuel living here. This was different though, the beginning was normal, with me seeing the event that took my dad on repeat, but it changed. I was on a black plain of sand, which stretched as far as I could see. It had no features except a small table with a letter on top of it. I walked over to it and opened the letter. Dear Mr., my name this place is changing, be wary. It has awakened. Signed, T.W. And then I was awake. It was 8 a.m. I drank coffee and petted Castle before going to my father's archives. He had documented a lot of what he encountered and I sat down trying to look for something called T.W. The closest thing I found was the witch, who had been obliterated by Ronnie for trying to give him some kind of potion. I couldn't find anything about this strange T.W. character. After wasting two hours looking, I got a call about some ankle biters stealing some lady's necklace and had to sort out that problem with a lot of bribes and not a small amount of yelling. After I went to sleep I had another dream. It was the same landscape as before with the table and the letter. Dear Mr. You will not be able to identify me as long as I wish to remain hidden. The messengers emerge from it. The key is hidden. I do not have Eno. Signed, T.W. So that's all the recent events summed up and I still have some free time, let's talk about some monsters. The ankle biters. These fucking bastards. They're one of the most annoying beings out of all of them. They're like a slightly deformed race of human childlike creatures. The only thing they do is annoy people by stealing little things from them by materializing, nipping it and running like little bitches. Every time they steal something I have to personally go to their lair and bribe them with Kit Kats and yell at them until they give it back. I have thought about burning their lair down but I'm not that stupid, although I've come close a shocking amount of times. They've got a huge stash of gold coins, amulets and other stuff down there, and all they do is sit around it and snicker. Although, they can be brutal if you steal from them. A visiting cousin decided that a necklace looked good and decided they wouldn't miss it. Guess what, they did, the greedy little buggers. And they tore Hom to pieces. They're very simple in that regard, no complicated unexisting, no twisting people into yo-yos, just good old-fashioned ripping and tearing. They don't do much else interesting though. That's most of the stuff I wanted to tell you guys about, I'm planning on investigating these messengers a D-tracking down their source. Also trying to figure out this TW character and what it is. And I'm definitely going to reinforce my windows and probably going to out spikes on them if I can figure out how. Anyway, thanks for reading, I hope I never see you in Fairfield, for your own safety, and until next time. Out. You thought I was going to tell you my name weren't you, 
don't worry, we'll get there one day.